This video is from my Most Important Cloud Concepts collection. If you'd like to watch the full series where I describe all concepts in a single video, check out the link in the description. Next, we'll be talking about storage. And you may think that this is a simple thing to talk about, but it's actually like not that simple. There's like a lot of different uh, terms or it's kind of an overloaded term. So there's like a, a couple underlying concepts for storage that I think we should talk about. Uh, so the first flavor of storage when working with, with uh, cloud computing is just a general object storage, right? General object storage. And object storage refers to things like, could be media files, right? Could be media files like, um, I don't know, uh, MP4s, for example, could be uh, uh, audio files or, or videos or whatever. Um, I don't know what the, what the format, AVIs, is that still a thing? I'm not even sure anymore. Uh, could be JSON objects, right? So like structured JSON objects, could be like CSV files that you want to store. Uh, could be like a whole bunch of other things. Could be just like blobs or byte stream data that you'd like to, to store as an object uh, on the cloud. Um, so this is what we generally refer to as object storage. It's just kind of like a general purpose dumping ground where you can put miscellaneous uh, types of media and then access it later on within an application, right? So this is one format of storage that is very, very popular within cloud computing because you know there's a lot of use cases where you need to store media and images and JSON config files and CSV data and things like this. Before we used to host these on like on a volume, on a disk on a, uh, that's attached to an application. But uh, the advent of object storage kind of trivializes this problem and makes this so that you don't need to worry about like where you're hosting this thing. It's in the cloud, so you can access it pretty much any time. Uh, this is a good segue into like the second category of storage, which is like what we call block storage. Um, and block storage essentially are like volumes, right? So volumes. Uh, and a lot of cloud providers make this easy where these volumes can automatically scale up or down uh, depending on how much how much like resources you need as part of it. Uh, so if you have like a hard drive, for example, that's what I mean when I say volumes, by the way. Um, maybe you need like a lot of data on your hard drive for some job, but not for a long period of time. Maybe it's for some like machine learning processing job and you quickly will want to release that piece of uh, infrastructure once you're done, right? Uh, so cloud providers support auto scaling on your volumes. Uh, they also support if you have like a bunch of different instances over here and you want to attach this volume to this instance and also this instance and also this instance. And then like it's the same data, but it's shared across these different instances. That's also supported. Uh, so this is what we refer to generally as block storage, right? Um, just erase this so I can clear up some space. Uh, block storage. And then the third one is probably kind of like the most popular, which is databases, right? Databases. And there's a whole bunch of different types of databases on cloud providers. There's like the traditional relational databases, relational. Um, there's NoSQL databases, which are databases that um, kind of typically use like a document model. Well, this is kind of a category of databases. It's not a particular type, um, but let me just make some room while I'm at it too. Um, you know, you can have things like MongoDB in here. You can have things like uh, DynamoDB. You can have things like OpenSearch, which is what we talked about previously, or Elasticsearch. Uh, you can have a variety of graph databases that are considered um, NoSQL. So this is like a large category, and this is the third category. Um, NoSQL is a large category that has a lot of different types of databases that you can use. Kind of the traditional one, this is where you would use like SQL. Um, so things like Postgres, things like MySQL, things like uh, Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle, these would fall under um, relational databases. Uh, there's also kind of like a subcategory of this, which isn't necessarily a database, but the, blind, the lines are getting blurry these days, uh, which is like cache solutions. Cache, cache is being um, temporary data, right? This is data that kind of usually sits in memory and it's for applications that need it very, very regularly, but don't want to incur the cost of calling a database uh, and having to update the database. Um, so there's a bunch of different cache solutions that are available as well. Whether or not it's considered a database, that's kind of a, a subjective discussion or subjective uh, decision, uh, but it's something to be aware of that it exists. Okay, let's move on to the next topic now.